Ciao ragazzi and welcome to the latest episode of the Fratelli di Rugby podcast. Uh, at this time we're recording Thursday, uh, almost a week after what was another maybe slightly depressing evening, depending on the which way you look at it. Uh, I'm joined as usual by Mike. Mike, how are you? Have you recovered? How are you feeling now? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. I think rationalised sort of last week and, you know, you look back and, and you sort of accept accept it for what it was. And, you know, the last two games, I don't think were a fair reflection of us, but we move. We do indeed. And if anything put a smile on my face, it was in Portugal. Uh, beat Fiji, that was something that cheered me up in that moment. So, so that was good. Um, but I will introduce our latest special guest, uh, the young Italian number eight and next to Chiefs number eight, Ross Vincent. Ross, how are you? Thank you very much for joining us. No worries. Thank you very much for having me on here. Um, very well, thank you. Um, just in the prep for first Premiership game actually this weekend coming up against Saracens. Um, yeah, all good. No complaints on my side. Yeah, so the Premiership does return. Obviously, Friday night is the first game. Uh, and who who have Exeter who have Exeter got this weekend? Uh, they've got long-standing rivals Saracens actually at home. Okay. Yeah. I don't think I don't think I've seen a team sheet yet, so I'm assuming that at this time of recording, you're probably still not allowed to tell us whether you're involved or not. But uh, I don't think I am actually. I don't think so. Yeah. I think the next few days, will, the team will be revealed. Sure, but having played pre-season, I think it's fair to say you've certainly done as much as you could possibly do to to impress. How has how has pre-season been? Obviously, we've seen you've been crossing that that white line a fair few times. You've been enjoying yourself by the sounds of it. Yeah, been ab- absolutely loving it. Um, it's been been quite a gr- gruesome preseason, though. I don't know if you've been following any of the the events that we've been taking part in. Um, we actually had a, a marine camp down in Limston Naval Base um, for two days because a lot of our strength and conditioning staff are all ex ex Marines, so they they they've got good connections in there, and they they got us in for a few days, um, which we weren't so thankful for. But I think during the games we we sort of we we thank them because we I mean we've we've been feeling feeling pretty strong in the field feeling fit, um, and I'm just enjoying I'm just enjoying every moment out, moment out there with the boys. It's not the it's not the first time we've been talking about military bases because the Italians before the World Cup also yeah. did something very yeah, very right. similar. Who was it? Who was it? We were talking to Mike that was saying how horrible it was. <laughs> was it Tommy? Toa. It was Tommy. Oh, it was Toa. Yes, it that was, was Toa. It. Yeah, yeah, Toa Halafia. Toa Halafia. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a that was an interesting one because obviously they put you in a position where it's it's not just sort of the physical and it's more the mental stuff, isn't it? Yeah, that, that, that they have to put you through. And yeah, I think I think as well um, when when you guys are secluded on some sort of random area. I know obviously down there they do a lot on like the sand and it's quite it's quite heavy intensive. That like it's probably what sort of. How, it bonds you guys, doesn't it? Moving yeah. forward, so yeah. Um, yeah. How was that anyway? What, what, what? Any highlights of of, of the the camp? Um, I'm sure if you go onto the Instagram, you'll find a photo of of all of us in our army kit, um, just covered head to toe in mud. There was like a mud a mud course. It's basically when the tide goes out in the estuary. Um, it's just like like uh, like just it's just mud. And they basically get us in there with, with logs and and um, like tarpaulins and, and trying to drag each other around, and it's it's pretty gross, gruesome. It's probably one of the hardest things that we've we've ever had to experience. But I mean, like you said, it does bond you together. And I mean, that's probably that's probably a highlight of that was probably a highlight because just like knowing that we've all gone through that together, and just watching each other just sort of thrive in, in those environments was was a, was a, was a good, great thing to see. Yeah, and. Um- Obviously, talk to us a little bit about the, the the preseason. Obviously, there's always the work that goes on behind closed doors that you know result on pitch. For you guys going well, you in particular scoring scoring your tries and stuff. But obviously, there's a lot of work that goes into it. How, how have you found the transition? I know obviously you've been doing um, well. It's your second season, but you've been doing a lot with sort of the Exeter University team last year in Bucks. How how has that sort of transitioned across and, and how are you finding um 
yeah, the preseason prem cup and and sort of looking forward to to the season. Yeah, well, um, last year I obviously spent most of the year before my injury at the university playing for the university, um, and we, our head of essence SNC there was a guy called Les Barrow, who's also ex Marines, um, and he's just got he's just got a great energy about him, vibe about him. All of the boys respect him, um, and basically he's been called up into the Chiefs. Um, strength and conditioning setup, and I've sort of been dragged into tre- preseason this year. Um, so he's been he's been really helpful. He's actually like in, he manages m- manages me and a group of guys. So they've got a, quite a few SNC staff members who look after a, a group of boys. Um, so there's there's a bit of there's quite a lot of one on one engagement and interaction, which means that they're they're constantly sort of monitoring you and pushing you, um, and tweaking your program to what what you need. Um, obviously every player is different everyone's got a different body sort of comp- composition um and i think they've they've managed me quite well and, and sort of tweaked the things that i need to need to be working more on um but it's just it's just it's a really great setup at the chiefs um and i just i feel looked after and i feel like everyone wants the best out of me and, and the team obviously um so i've the transition's been pretty smooth i i, I can't can't have any complaints about that and Ross, I guess obviously with the injury that spending quite a lot of time out, I guess you as much as anyone whilst you've wanted to to kind of get back at it as soon as possible, there must be an element of, of looking after your body and making sure that an injury doesn't happen again. So I imagine that it's been quite they've been quite keen on on managing you, like like you just said, as much as possible because you don't want to back up one pretty nasty injury with another, do you? Yeah, absolutely. Um a few of the boys we have a. We always talk about how the this physio team are, are very conservative, and they would rather delay you getting back on the field, and and it drives us nuts. But I think long term, it's it's obviously the right thing, just to, like you said, to make sure you don't back up one injury with another. Um, and yeah, the 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 um the physio department's really good over here as well. They they look after us very well. And I suppose a question for for those of you guys who are listening who don't know. Uh, Ross obviously came as part of a product of the Italian age grade um, prior to obviously moving into Exeter. I, uh, I'm quite interested to find out how well prepared do you feel f- from your time, um, obviously in the centres of excellence, etc., in Italy, moving over to, to um, Exeter. How, how well did that prepare you? Because I think there's a general consensus within Italian rugby, but also from those who are sort of looking from the outside that know a little bit about it is we tend to struggle with the transition of like fantastic talents like yourself and maybe a few of your your previous teammates integrating them and and allowing them to do the next level so how well prepared did you feel um it's a good question that um was it a step up i suppose that's that's probably a better question yeah a big step up um so I was obviously lucky enough to get a bit of time in the Zebra Academy or the Zebra setup for the last few months that I was in Italy, yeah. um, which was my first sort of experience of professional rugby. Um, and I think, I think just the, I think the physicality was one thing that I think was a, a bit of a step up from under twenties. Um, you've got like just, like grown men, strong men that are running at you like week in, week out. Um, and your body has just got, sort of got, sort of got to adapt really quickly. Yeah. Um, because seven days, as it, it sounds like a long time, but after a big game on a Saturday, um, turning around to get ready for the next Saturday is like, it, it will fly by and your body has to sort of adjust. I think that was the biggest step up for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I suppose it's yeah. like playing Colts and then, you know, getting called up to an adult game. It, it's yeah. a, it, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that's probably something for those who, you know, played grassroots, particularly in the UK, probably can can uh, empathise with. Um, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's interesting, like I said, just because that's probably a point of contention with, with most of the, uh, most of, you know, the, the listeners. Um, it's something that is brought up quite a lot. So I'm glad you've had the opportunity just to lay it out a little bit. Yeah. And sort of looking ahead to this season, Ross, what are your... What are your sort of ambitions? Because obviously you're still a young man, and it's you're you're in a squad full of 
you know, full of full of talent and a, a very strong Exeter side. But given maybe the 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 exodus, as you will, of, of some players, does that does that potentially never nice to see people leave? But maybe for you personally, it, it maybe gives you a little bit more of a chance this season. Is this sort of maybe your real sort of breakthrough season? Is that how you see it? Um, I'd love it to be a breakthrough season, but obviously I can't. I can't predict that. I can't control that. Um, I'm just. I'm just. I'm very grateful just to be a part of the club. Um, obviously, like you said, there's a lot of big names that have gone out, which which gives rise to a lot of opportunity for youngsters to try and fill that that place. Um, I'd like to be the person that fills the jerseys that are left, um, but we'll we'll see how the season goes, um, and and see what opportunities come up. So I imagine the, the yeah very modest. I imagine the feedback the feedback has been surely must have been pretty positive given how you've gone in the in these first few games of the season at least. Um, yeah, I think the I think the, the coaches are I think they they're happy. Um, so obviously it was the Premiership Cup, which isn't the Premiership. So it's a lot of the sides that are in the in the Championship. Um, but yeah, I think it's been. It's just it, for me. It's not just about a few good performances. It's more about just consistently week in, week out, being the best version of myself. Um, that's the that's going to put me in the best stead when it comes into the season. So, would you say you've got any? Can you sort of confirm to any sort of individual goals you might have, or is that something you wanted to keep to yourself? Well, individual goals this year would be just to be, be playing as much as possible in the Premiership and being exposed to that sort of. Um, level of rugby for my development personally. Sure, that that's the thing. That's the thing, isn't it? Exposure. I think that's the word, isn't yeah. it? You want to be exposed to the highest elite level rugby as possible as a young man. Yeah, absolutely. I'll make you laugh, Ross. So I went back on. We've got a Discord. Um, I went back on Discord and I was. We've got a segment on the under twenties, and I looked back at my first comment um, after obviously watching. You, I think it was the game where you captained England and you did that sort of a passionate, a passionate um, uh, team talk, and um, that you, you, you played like a, a flare, <laughs> flurry game. But I think like that's that's where, one where I looked back and I was I saw the comment. I was like, we 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 should cap this man. And then a few <laughs> weeks back, a few weeks back, a month back or so, we uh, we have a conversation with Seb Negri, and Seb Negri's like he is one to to look out for in the future and really sort of concretize something that I think a lot of Italian fans who follow the under 20s relatively closely actually um, made up you know their own opinion on so how how much like I suppose support are you getting from some of the senior players like Seb some and I, I know obviously you came up with Jack Ferrari as well are you still in contact with those boys and yeah um, how's it all going yeah, so, so Jack Jack Ferrari and Luca Rizzoli, or or Peo as we call him, yeah. um, they they were my roommates when I was in the academy, the under twenties yeah. academy, um, and they were the reasons that my Italian actually got to where it was, um, and I'm sure they'll they'll give me a bit of credit for for their English improvements, but no, those two players specifically, um, I'm sh like Jack is Jack's doing. He's just come back from a shoulder injury, but he's doing well at Zebra. Luca yeah. was in. He got called into the the senior side camp for the World Cup previously a few months back. Um, yeah, yeah, so yeah. They're, they're flying at the moment, um, which I think is just is so positive to see some of those under twenty boys flooding through. And obviously, you got Laurie Laurie Pani, um, who's just made his first World Cup appearance a few weeks ago. Um, so it's it is. I think while while these results are hard to take, it's a bit of pill to swallow. I think there's a lot of a lot of positivity and hope that that should come away from it. Massively, massively, and I think actually most Italian fans look at these under twenties as the answer, right? Like, and not to put pressure on the boys because it's not your cross to bear. But I think if you're looking beyond what what happened this cycle and how transitional this cycle was, and how much effort you know the co coaches like Goosen and Kieran have put into to try and make you know, what we have a success. We've got some fantastic players, like you said, filtering through from from the age grade. And, you know, 
Pizzoli and 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 Jack Ferrari were fantastic at age grade, as were you. And you know, particularly your year. You know, you look at Genovese, you look at sort of that entire front row, and you guys have got, um, yeah, you got you guys really sort of punched well above your weight, considering the amount of resources that most of the other countries have uh, to put in. So I think that's something that a lot of fans are looking at with as as the glimmer of you know hope. Not to say it was all bad. This 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 um, cycle because I think there was like I said a lot of good but I think a lot of people are, are, are quite excited by 2027 and what it means and as a goal as a, as a country yeah absolutely I mean we've qualified now haven't we yeah yeah, yeah. Awesome. But, <laughs> mission done <laughs> ultimately yes it was a case of making sure we at least finished the job done and very much does have that feel of project 2027 with everything geared towards that and obviously we'll be led into that tournament you know fingers crossed knowing everything does go disastrously wrong but by a new a new coach and i'm just interested ross for you uh, as a player involved in the setup obviously in and around it um how much sort of how much sort of communication do you have with the senior setup say in the last sort of few months or so and then also as a, a sort of another question on, on top of that is when a new coach does come in, does that, does that, should, how does that make you feel? Do you feel like, oh, this is a chance for me or is that how you feel? Um, it's, a, it's a tricky question because my, obviously my long-term ambition is obviously represent Italy at the senior level. Um, but that still feels like such a distant, distant thing. I haven't really given it too much thought. Obviously, I had, a, I had two games for the Italy A, which were unbelievable to be a part of. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's just it, I'm just trying to focus on what's here right now. And if if they if that comes eventually, then that's that would be a dream come true. Um, but I'm not going to sort of wait around and and hope that they come calling. Yeah, I think I think you know right now you've got like you said you've got your. The ambitions for for this season to to play as many minutes as you possibly can, and I think actually that becomes almost a product of of the call up. The fact that you you know you can get those minutes under your belt and you start playing um, you know top top flight rugby again you know against some of the best players in the world, and that's where you know that you reap the rewards later on. Um, going back to to Exeter, obviously you know the style traditionally was very sort of forward dominant um very sort of traditional sort of style of play and i, I suppose you know that's why it aligns quite nicely as as saracens which i'm uh, i'm afraid my 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 other half her family are massive saracens fans um so uh, my apologies on that side yeah yeah i know um you can't, yeah you can't you can't pick it on sadly but um uh, it's quite a traditional style of play, quite forward dominant, and then allowing the backs to play. Like how how different, I suppose, um, or how much of a transition was it to to go from again, like you know, quite a conservative style, but a conservative Italian style of playing to to Exeter, where, like I said, it, you know, roles are probably a lot more different and you know a lot more busy as a forward as opposed to what you were sort of traditionally playing in age grade. Yeah, well, obviously every every team has their own opinions on how position, different positions we should play, especially as a back row. I mean, six, seven, and eight, depending on where you go, changes drastically from. I mean, in South Africa they have a different system, France have a different system, Chiefs have a different system, obviously. Um, but this year, I think I don't know if it's just this year or because I've just been a part of it this year. The um, there's quite a focus on um, sort of just linking backs and forwards and not just making it such a, a forward dominant game um like we've just it's 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 a different shape that we've sort of adopted and um, which is exciting it's it all brings pace it brings it it gets your backs involved but obviously your forwards as well um but in saying that we have actually got a new scrum coach from london irish called ross mcmillan um and he's done a lot of for work with the forwards which may seem may make it seem like it's a forward dominant game so it's it's sort of it's I think it's got a good variety, it's a good mixture. Um, but I think adapting to the 
um, position wise was was quite smooth and 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 know a lot of people who are helping out and and giving their advice. I think you can never really take scrummaging out of Exeter's DNA. I think that would just always yeah. exist. Yeah, There's yeah. only so much you can do before those forwards are like, oh, come on, let's just scrum instead. I just fancy scrum, which is something I'll never understand because I was never anywhere near a scrum, so I've actually got no idea what you're doing. Really. That is not my area of expertise. Ollie, that's a mic. Um, talk, talking about um, forwards, so have, uh, how has sort of the the... The, the current players like been have they like put their arm around you like some of the more senior players as well because obviously like you said it sounds like you were yoinked up when the strength and conditioning coach also got um sort of promoted to to, to chiefs were they were, was there element of a bit of hazing you know how it is early doors or was it just right okay we all need to we all need to sort of get in and uh, get stuck in together yeah well... Obviously, it's quite exciting, and you can. It's quite. I guess it's quite easy to get caught up in the whole idea of you. You're in a professional setup now, and like, wow. But I think it was more of just to get get your head down and, and prove what you show them what you can do. Sort of prove yourself. Um, but lo- there's been a few senior players, especially in the forward pack, namely sort of Jacques Vermeulen, um, who's who've been really helpful, and they've. They've they've left a, dropped a lot of wisdom on me, um, obviously being at the club for for so long, um, which has been really helpful. But then again, I mean Sam Simmons last year, I was sort of in and around when I was in my rehab. I was in and around some of the meetings and just watching how they train and and like just watching him in this in a training environment. What how, how he t- how he holds himself every day. Um, was inspirational and it was it took a lot of learns from from him um so yeah no it's been a, a really good learning curve and i'm sure there's there's a lot more learning to be done so just to change it make it a little bit more light-hearted because we have um a couple of sort of fun questions that we ask people and just for context for those of you guys who are listening and weren't aware or uh, those of you guys who are who are interested in finding out a little bit more, we have created a bit of a Spotify playlist to all of the uh, the Italian boys that we've spoken to, um, and it's a bit about sort of hype music and just just to sort of explain the context. Um, I think Tommy Allen and and Seb Negri uh, Seb Negri has some of the sort of angsty fourteen year old uh, songs and. Um, what was what was Tommy's again? Tommy's was um, it was that that the greatest showman, it's wasn't the greatest it? Greatest show. Uh, what's yeah, it? That's it. That's it. So like from now morning, on, that was it. It was that. that's it. That's it. So like for those of you guys who are who are interested in finding out a little bit more what the boys listen to 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 get hyped to, there we go. How about you, Ross? What is your hype from, music? From now on is actually one of my favorite songs. <laughs> wow, you and Tommy would get on very well. There we go. Um, so funny story actually, well maybe not so funny, but um when I was in so I used to live in Dubai, um and I my 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 dad had gone to this boarding school in, in Cape Town called Bishops Dallas and College, which is a famous rugby school. Um and when I was in year eight, year nine, um I saw this, I, I found out about this and I, I was watching all the videos, all the rugby highlights and all the, the all the spring bo- ex spring box that had come through the school. Um, and there, there was one highlight that um, had a song called Walking on a Dream by Empire of the Sun. Um, and I used to watch that video over and over again, just like begging my mom to go to this boarding school. I begged her for about over a year um, and eventually they, they sent me off. They sent me in, in year 11, sorry, year 11. Um, and that song is actually my try song now, Walking on a Dream by Empire of the Suns. Love it. Love it. Well, well, we'll have to add that. Yeah. We'll have to add that. <laughs> <Great tune. laughs> um, in terms of gaming, you, you're a student now. Do you, I suppose, like you've been a student for the past year or so. Do you, do you, ha, ha, what are living arrangements like? Do you have, um, do, do you live with students? Do you live with some of the guys from, from the, the the academy what what's it like um no so last year i was on in student halls 
Yeah. That was my first year of university. And now second year, I've moved into a digs, as we call it, like a, just a student accommodation, six man house, five other rugby boys. Wow. Um, no dishes are getting done in that house. I'm telling you. Yeah, well, you say that, but I, I can tell you to my kitchen right now. It's, it's, it's one of the tidier kitchens I've seen in, in the city. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's, it's nice to come. Obviously, you've got long days at the club. Um, you get some days you get back at six and at seven in the morning. Um, but it's nice to just take your mind off of rugby and just think about uni. It's, it's a good sort of escape because you can't constantly just be thinking, thinking about rugby to drive insane. Yeah, fair play, fair play. Um, um, yeah, it sounds like your 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 uni experience was a lot cleaner than mine. Um, <laughs> yeah. look- <laughs> I was going to say my my understanding of a big house full of rugby boys would have been <laughs> it was an absolute state. The whole place yeah. was a yeah. times times are changing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You you should have seen ours. We had we had this thing. I, I went to um I went to St Mary's in Twickenham. Um, we had this thing where. Uh, people just knew that we left the back door open. So, like, if they were just walking past and they needed the toilet or whatever, they're just like, honestly, like, we, <laughs> that, that house was just, that house was a house in name. Uh, it was basically like squatting, <laughs> mate. It's bad. Um, but yeah, no, I'm glad. I'm glad. And how, how you find next? Obviously, it's a great university. What are you studying? I, 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 I don't actually know. I'm studying business economics. Nice, nice. Economics. How are you finding it? Um, it's, it's interesting. Actually, I've got some interesting modules this year. Um, it's got, it's, I have to sort of knuckle down this year as well. Second year, third year, count towards your grade. First year, you can sort of get away with just yeah. the bare minimum, the forty oh, yeah. percent pass. Um, but now, now I had to I had to knuckle down a bit this year, and I'm enjoying it. To be honest, good. How hard is how hard is that though? I guess to be, I imagine so from people that I used to go to university with who just played in the the, the uni team. I imagine that was quite a lot because they were training quite frequently through the week but given that you're a playing for a professional rugby club at the same time as doing a degree that that must be that must be a, that must be very difficult to juggle how how do you find that do you is are there times when you struggle or is that something that you sort of kind of take in your stride well we're only three weeks into the new the new term um right. and so far it's going all right i'm having to <laughs> try and just race away at the end of the day and get to seminars or but mostly lectures, I'll I'll just rewatch because they're all recorded. I um, mean that doesn't require me to necessarily be in the lecture. Um, but at the moment, as it stands, I'm 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 managing. But we'll see we'll see what happens when exam time comes. How understanding yeah. have they been? Oh, sorry. Go on. What does that say? I was gonna say how understanding have they been because we had a few of the boys that played age grade come to 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 my uni, and whenever they had whatever sort of sporting um, uh, meeting event that they needed to attend. Like the university was normally quite good with that. Like have, have, have they been supportive with regards to the link to the to chiefs as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's, there's a really good connection. I think between there's a good relation between the, with the chiefs boys and um, the university and they understand like it's a, it's a, a career path that is not exactly common Um and they and they respect that, but they do, like they will try. They will try and accommodate you to the best, like as best they can. Um, so they will maybe switch you around to days, to day. Like for example, I had a, I had a seminar that I couldn't attend on one day, and then I they basically just said, just come in. These are the times that you can come in. Um, whatever suits, whenever suits you, and it, it won't be an issue. Um, but they're all aware of it, and they've they've all been pretty understanding so far. We'll check, back with you. we'll check back with you in a few months time yeah. we'll, see. Yeah. we'll see how you're doing uh i just had a few i had a few more lighthearted ones as well i guess with with being at uni as well as trying to do a degree you're in a pressure rugby club you've also got to eat and look after yourself how are you with how are you in the kitchen um as an italian i'd, I'd like to say that i'm, I'm right in the kitchen good <laughs> But they we get we get fed breakfast and lunch at the at the club every ah, day, okay. which is I and I try and get a box of leftovers as well to take home. Um, but yeah, evening meal times are so we we often share meals here with some of the, my housemates, um, and I'm 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 sure they'll tell you I've taught them a few things. I was going to say what is what's your go to Italian dish then if they're asking you to cook something? Uh, a carbonara. Our house loves a carbonara. 
Yeah. Fair play. Go, go. Te- te- let me ask: Are they are they putting cream in the carbonara? No, 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 no. no. I, oh, I was going to say it's been banned. <laughs> <bought them well. laughs> <laughs> and like what is that in your hand um fair play so obviously we, we we've spoken to a fair few people um and we've also spoken to someone that you might not do, do you know leo matocha he was um, at the yeah. no 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 okay no worries so he was he was at exeter as, as one of the academy coaches and spoke very very highly of you um not well yeah like a, a little while back he, i think he's actually just moved to leicester now um but with regards to um like i suppose taking a step back and in, into to, to the less light hard side but in terms of where you see yourself going from here obviously you've got your degree to to, to focus on you've got exeter to focus on um we spoke briefly about national team and I, I know like that's down the line but is there any other discussions because obviously i know you're eligible for like a million and one countries aren't you like you you i think i think when i was looking into it you you're you're eligible to play for france as well aren't you i don't right? know of. <laughs> oh okay well, well well wiki needs to be updated then um but is, is it just south africa and italy then that yeah, yeah, yeah okay fine, fine, fine eventually fine. it would be england okay okay yeah. perfect hopefully it doesn't get to that <laughs> you can speak to the executives <laughs> sure i will we will have words um yeah, but yeah look ross it's been it's been fantastic to talk to you finally and uh good to sort of introduce ourselves to you and um it's been it's been brilliant and hopefully fingers crossed for you that this really is your your breakthrough th- season and you get plenty of minutes for exeter and we we Thanks. really look forward to, to seeing how you go this season thanks very much i appreciate that and thank you for having me on your on your a podcast it's been it's been good fun <laughs> good yeah i'm glad yes well we're, we're we're doing our best but uh yeah mike a pleasure as always yeah good night thank you for coming on thanks, very much. thanks, thanks for everyone mike. for listening yeah for one after two team make sure to subscribe share like uh and we will let you know when this podcast is available uh until then it's uh goodbye for me goodbye for all the boys and uh, we will see you all very very soon Dance the 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 dance the